Lilies and Lilacs, Episode 14, A Question Long Overdue. And that makes 20. Bonta wiped the sweat from her forehead as she gazed at the warehouse. It was a fairly decent warehouse constructed from metal and wood. There was a large area where Bonta stored the recently chopped down trees. Another area where she would turn the wood into various wooden planks and boards for construction. And a third where her horse and cart were stored. This wasn't a massive space, but it was hers. To ensure that her workshop was secure, Bonta had purchased several wonderful artifacts that prevented the building from catching fire or the door locks from being picked. She had even made sure to buy artifacts that made her horse Nielsen comfortable and warm. Bonta took in a deep breath and savored the smell of lumber. Well, well, well. Looky here, boys. She's the base bitch who's been taking our jobs. Bonta's skin crawled as she turned around. Four of her former co-workers, Bicolis, Andrew, Mile, and Gustin, stood in her workshop. Each of them had sneers on their faces. We don't want you here, you lousy half-ogre brute. You're making it harder on us. That's because you're lazy. I'm working hard to make something of myself, and I didn't take your jobs. I made one for me, where I won't be talked about behind my back. We still talk about you. Even the foreman thinks you're no good now, you beast bitch. Get out of town and stop taking all the work. No, I'm not leaving. And stop calling me a beast bitch. I d don't have to take this abuse. This is my workshop. If you don't leave, then we're gonna make you leave, you ugly half-ogre trash. One of the men drew a dagger from his belt and glared harder at Bonta. The others balled their fists and they started to approach her. They stopped, however, when Bonta grabbed her wood axe. In response, the other three drew their daggers too. Um, maybe we shouldn't do this. The beast bitch can chop us in two. It's fine. If she actually fights back, we we'll tell the city guard that she attacked us with her axe. One way or another, we're going to get rid of her. It's four of us, and only one of her. No, it isn't. Bonta turned her attention to the door, where a group of people stood. Zeti, Fonica, and Tessica glared at the four men. Oh. oh, shit. Oh, shit is right. We heard what you said. We're going to tell the city guard. The hate-filled rage trickled out of the four lumberjacks, and they nervously glanced toward one another. Tessica disappeared from view, but Bonta heard her voice. Help! Help! Call the city guard! Oh, crap! We've got to get out of here! As the four tried to move toward the door, Zeddy and Fonica barred their path. Oh, no, you don't! You can't threaten our friend and get away with it. Get out of the way, or we'll stab ya! Just try it, asshole. None of the four co-workers looked at Bonta and their panic and anxiousness were directed at her friends instead. A sour bitterness saturated her heart, and yet she pushed through it and swung her axe at Mile. Rather than attack with the head, she flipped it around, so the blunt side struck the man in the left shoulder. Mile collapsed on the ground and screamed. Oh! Ah! Oh! My shoulder! Oh, God! It's... Oh! The other three turned around to see Bonta step forward. This time, she delivered a hard, blunt strike to Gustin's ribcage. He hunched over and gagged. Andrew threw the dagger down. Okay, I give up! I'm sorry! Tears were in Bonta's eyes as she lowered her axe to the side. Tessica returned a minute later with four city guards. The city guards entered her workshop secured the four attackers, and then listened to the accounts of what happened. Her former co-workers were arrested. Once they were alone, Bonta started to cry a little. 
I... I didn't want that to happen. I just want to be left in peace. <laughs> I'm so sorry that it happened, Bonta. However, those pricks are going to go to prison. They tried to murder you, and so they're going away for a long time. <sighs> but what if their families retaliate? I mean, I bought these awesome protections, but what if someone tries to steal my stuff? Fonica came over and placed a hand on Bonta's shoulder. My friend, you don't have to worry about that. Not only are our artifacts guaranteed to keep your workshop safe, but if you're still feeling anxious, we might have something else. Noswald has been developing a line of automated defense golems that will come to life and defend a specified location. They're still in development, but if you want, we could let you test one out for free. <sighs> Really? Thank you. That would be wonderful. <sighs> I should probably start carrying a hand axe for protection. What a way to start a day. Well, we're going to make it better, because we're taking you out to lunch. You are? But why? Well, because you're a special lady, and we appreciate you. <laughs> and <laughs> I have a new business venture I want to discuss with you, too. One that will make us both a lot of gold. Bonta sniffled a little. Is everything okay? You three seem up to something. Up to something? <laughs> no, no, we're totally not. Tessica grabbed Bonta by the arm. We're not taking no for an answer. Also, see this as a celebration for your business. It's a great accomplishment, and we're so proud of you. Oh, well, thank you, girls. Bonta allowed herself to be dragged along after she locked her workshop. Bonta, Zeddy, Fonica, and Tessica went to one of the best restaurants in the city, a place called Greasy Brarth's Down Home Cooking. It was half-ogre cuisine, and the owner was actually a childhood friend, Brarth Sumner. Eating half-ogre food definitely eased Bonta into a more relaxed state. For her meal, she ordered a broiled Cornish hen, with an assortment of baked potato slices, roasted radishes, and squash, all in a cranberry duck broth. The meal was so hearty, and a wave of euphoria caressed over her. During the meal, Fonica proposed a lucrative deal. Bonta would sell all of her lumber to Noswald and Fonica exclusively, and they would in turn create enchanted lumber. They could sell it to Bonta's contacts, and the wood would be far superior to the unenchanted wood. Fonica explained that she would pay Bonta a much higher rate than any of the current contracts, and she would still be a premier lumberjack. So, are you feeling better? Yes. <sighs> A good meal and a business venture. It made up for this morning's issue for sure. Well, I hope you're up for more fun, because this is stop one of three. Three? Wait, what? What's going on? Zeddy clamped her hands over her mouth, and both Fonica and Tessica gave the former adventurer hard looks. Sorry. Sorry. What Zeddy meant to say was that, why should the fun stop now? We have a couple more places we want to take you. Oh, I don't know. I still have some more work to do, and I... Ah, ah, ah. Remember, I'm buying all of your lumber, so you don't really need to do anything other than hang out with us. Don't you want to hang out with us? I do want to, but then let's go. Zeddy grabbed one of Bonta's arms, and Tessica grabbed the other. They whisked her to the street while Fonica paid for lunch. Their next location was Fay Touched Spa, a place where many of the most elegant and noble individuals in the city often visited. Oh, we're going here? This place might be too, um, high-end for someone like me. Nonsense, dear. 
You constantly work hard chopping down trees and doing extreme physical labor. This will be great for you. They have a great bathhouse, a sauna, and a couple of great massage therapists. This sort of thing was far beyond Bonta's element, and yet she allowed herself to be pulled inside. The group of four started off at the bathhouse, and they were treated to lovely oils, soaps, shampoos, and even conditioner. Bonta's skin sang out with rejuvenated joy. After that, they drank some water with fruit in it, which was quite refreshing. Tessica led Bonta and the others into the sauna, and all of their toxins sweat out of them. The last part of the excursion was the massage. A pair of women escorted Bonta into a room, and they had her lay on her stomach on a long, narrow bed. At first, it was strange having two people rub on her body, and then waves of relief washed over Bonta. Her eyes fluttered, and the massage therapists continued to squeeze, press, and apply pressure to her body. By the time Bonta was finished, she had to be helped out of the room by both massage therapists. Zeddy, Fonica, and Tessica sat with Bonta as she was slowly waking up. You look really relaxed. <laughs> Bonta, Zeddy, Tessica, and Fonica sat in the lobby of the spa, dressed in their normal clothes. I had no idea spas could be so... wonderful! The door opened up and a trio of women walked into the spa. One of them wore crimson metal and leather armor, and she was quite beautiful and had long blonde hair. Bonta's eyes met with the woman's, and her smile fell away. The others turned to see her too. Oh no, not you. The cruel woman wasn't looking at Tessica, but only Bonta. A vicious sneer creased her face. Ugh, oh goddess, they let subhuman beasts like you in here? Ugh, these small town spas are nothing like the boutiques and resorts of the major cities. For shame. Hey, shut the hell up, you pretentious twit. For just a moment, the adventurer named Eid beamed a disgusted glance at Zeddy before returning it to Bonta. Whoa, wait, wait, did, did you come here to make yourself beautiful? <laughs> oh, you poor thing, half all your trash could never compare to us human women. In fact, your friends are pitying you. Aw, oh, I mean, why would anyone? Tessica rose from her seat and got in the adventurer's face. Shut up! Leave our friend alone. Bonta is the sweetest person I know, and the fact that you keep antagonizing her is pathetic. <laughs> well, you'd better get used to it. I'm not gonna leave her alone until we fight. She and I have unfinished business, and until that timid little nothing fights me, I won't give up. Zeddy rose to her feet. If you want to fight, I'll fight you. <sighs> I don't care about you. I want to fight her! Bonta rose up and then stepped up to Eid, a prickly sort of rage billowing up in her. She bawled her fists. So, if I fight you, you'll leave me alone? Everyone turned their attention to her, and the snarling, nasty look on Eid's face fell away. I am sick of your nastiness and your malice! You want to fight me? Then let's step outside right now! And if you want to use weapons, I'll get my wood axe, and then I'll show you why I'm the best lumberjack in the city! I chop down massive trees for a living. I could easily split your twiggy ass in two. Bonta glared hard at the smaller woman, and she rolled her shoulders, making her muscle frame pop in a couple of places. Her friends kept switching their gazes between Bonta to Eid, and then back to Bonta again. Eid's companions did the same. Well, fight me now, or never bother me again. For a long moment, Eid just looked up at Bonta. Then she walked out of the spa. Her two companions trailed her wake, and they beamed nervous glances at Bonta. Once they were alone, Zeti, Fonica, and Tessica whirled to face Bonta. Oh my goddess, that was awesome! Very impressive. I have chills. Maybe she's outside waiting for me. <sighs> if she is, I'll fight her with all of my strength. 
Uh, screw her. I don't think she has the guts. We're probably expected at her last location anyway. <laughs> Come on, Bonta, and no questions. Bonta, Zeddy, Fonica, and Tessica left to the spa. And to Bonta's relief, Eid was not outside. After ten minutes of walking, they arrived at their location. Huh? What's going on? Why is it closed? Bonta frowned as she studied the sign on the front door of Lilies and Lilacs. That read, Sorry, closed for today for a special event. When she looked back at Tessica, her longtime friend only grinned. <laughs> Go inside. A thousand whirlwinds spun inside her stomach, and Bonta's mouth went dry. Several whispers danced in the back of her mind. Whispers of hopes and desires, yet she lacked the courage to give them spoken form. She stared at the door, and then rested a hand on the doorknob. Bonta paused. Go! 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 Bonta took a reinforcing breath and opened the door. The sweet aroma of flowers greeted her like a longtime friend, the scent coming from arrangements placed on the tables. Tables were positioned to make an obvious pathway through the tavern, and aside from the lit candles scattered about, it was dark inside. The bar also had flowers and candles on it, too. Bonta followed the trail and saw Morden at the end of the path. Bonta's heart stopped. He was dressed in elegant and sophisticated clothing, like some kind of fairy tale prince. He grinned at her with a radiant smile, and her knees felt a little more wobbly. Someone rested a hand on her back. Come on, dear. He's waiting. Tessica gently took one hand, and Fonica took the other. They guided her down the path to where Morden stood. The whispers in Bonta's head were dragon roars now. Hey, how was your day? Oh, it was mostly good, with a smattering of bad sprinkled in. Morden's smile didn't falter. I'm sorry to hear there were some bad parts of your day, but I would love to hear all about it. I... I want to listen to how your days are, every day going forward. I, you, you do? Yes, I do. Bonta, you are so amazing. I admire you so much because no matter what happens to you, you always push through it with inner and external strength. Your positivity and your warm spirit. I love you and I'm so proud of you. You've created your own business and you followed your dreams. I'm so happy I get to be here to support you in your victories. <laughs> I love having your support. <sighs> I love you too. I'm happy to hear that. That makes this next question that much easier. For a brief moment, time around Bonta came to a screeching halt. Only Morden and she moved, breathed, and even existed. N next question? Morden pulled out a ring from his pocket, and he dropped to his knee. Bonta, will you marry me? A wide smile spread across Bonta's face. 